the official podcast of the Jacksonville Public Library. I'm Hurley. And I'm Jenna. Today we're going to talk to a man with two green thumbs and a bunch of other green fingers. His name is Nathan Ballantyne, and he is also known as the man in overalls. Yes, I like to refer to him as the man in overalls. He's pretty great. But before we get into that with Nathan, we're starting a new segment today. Yes, another new segment. Exciting, exciting. It's called Renew or Return. Gonna keep it. Gonna drop it. In this awesome new segment, Brian is going to give us a couple topics and we're going to choose if we would renew it, aka check it out again, or return it. We didn't like it. We're giving it back couple library terms for you all right brian hit us with the first one take it away producer all right here's the first one would you guys renew or return the harry potter series oh renew y'all already know we love us some hp hold on okay yeah we're talking books right yeah we're talking books all right yeah Yeah. i've actually never seen a harry potter movie okay i read them all for the first time last year and i had realized that i'd only seen like one or two of the movies are they worth it? Are they any good? I mean, yeah, they're decent. Mm-hmm. Books are better, ob. Well, yeah. Always. But yeah, I remember all my friends like dressing up for like midnight premieres and stuff throughout high school. And I was just like. <sighs> I did that for the book releases when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Ultimate nerd. Books a million over in Regency. That was me <laughs> hanging out in my Hogwarts robes. And you have curly hair. So did you look like Hermione? Maybe. Does she have curly hair? It's like frizzy. All right. But yeah, here's his more beautiful curls. All right. Yeah. So definitely renew. Renewing it. Yeah. All right. Next. Next one. Let's see if you've heard of this guy. All right. So renew or return William Shakespeare. Wow. Who's that? Billy. Billy Shakespeare. Oh, Billy. (laughs) Billy Shakespeare wrote a whole bunch of sornets. (laughs) (laughs) That's him. Um, This is a hard one. I guess. I mean, no, these for real. Do you all want, right. Yeah, not all go, right. not going on what you want people to think of you. Sure, sure. I'm gonna return <laughs> it because if I was even checking it out, it was required reading. Yeah, I agree. And this I is, finished it, and I'm done. This is on a need to read basis. And yeah, I'm not needing to read it right now, so yeah, I'm gonna True. return. Is it like collected works? Yeah, collected. All right, like most yeah. popular. Most pop. That's okay. a. Whew. That's a big old book. Yeah, I'm returning that. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Yeah, no I go. like the honesty. All right, next one, I feel like it's going to be a little, we might get our first return and renew from Ooh. both of you. What would you guys say about ebooks? Oh, just in general? In general, ebooks. If I even checked one out. Mm-hmm. That is shocking. I'm clearly returning it because <laughs> I definitely got the book in print too. So. <laughs> Bye bye ebook. Yeah. I'm I'm returning it so Jenna can check it out. Thank you. Okay, well, if I have it, then I most likely have the print book and the audio book as well. But yeah, I I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I love my Kindle Paperwhite. Take it with me everywhere. Also, Kindle app on your iPhone, lifesaver. Yeah, I'm I'm renewing it for sure. Always. Cool. Next up, return or renew the Twilight series. <laughs> have never read did you read them yes i read them. okay all right yeah i read them and they were obviously i was in high school and they were great loved it renewing it yeah i'm gonna renew it i think i would renew i would give it a try you know i'm an adult now i don't know if i would love them now as an adult but i loved them as a kid i think it'd be fun series yeah i think it'd be fun to read them now they were so culturally relevant for so long oh yeah i definitely felt pressured to read them because everyone else was reading it and you know the team jacob team edward conundrum there were a lot of teams yeah that's all i remember Uh, vampires is that what they're about vampires yeah okay vampires and werewolves okay it was a great series movies (sighs) sketch don't watch Uh, the movies okay they're horrible (laughs) Book site. Yeah, cool. Renew. So renew both of you. Yeah, I'd renew. All right, yeah. cool. Next up, Stephen King. Renew or return? Ooh, renewing. Never read a Stephen really? King novel. Really? Saying it now. I will renew as long as it is not his book on writing, which is like <laughs> the worst writing book ever. But Why? so many people love it. I hate it because. He just he just has all these baby boomer references to things. It's a very like back in my day kind of book. Yeah. 
And I just don't love it. And it takes him a while to actually start talking about his writing process. So I would return that, but I would renew pretty much everything else by Stephen King because he's great. The guy's a master. Yeah. Isn't everything like pretty scary though? Oh, for sure. Not in a scary book. Really? Mm. See, I love being scared. No, yeah. I don't know. Right. Um, fun fact, recently started watching Riverdale and I get freaked out every night watching it. This really? is like a CW teen series, and it scares me. You're just easily freaked out? Easily freaked out. I don't think Stephen King is for you. Yeah, I'm going to return. Have you seen him on Twitter? No. Is he it has a corgi. I think her name is Molly, but oh, he calls gosh. her the thing of evil. What? It's really funny. He'll say, like, the thing of evil got into the trash today again. <laughs> so funny. It's just his fluffy dog. I love it. Yeah. He needs a great. cat. He's a good guy. <laughs> yeah, he seems like a cat guy. Yeah, yeah, he seems like he should have a cat. All right, next up, renew or return iced coffee. What do you guys think of iced coffee when reading books? Oh, oh, iced coffee when reading books? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'll slurp that down. R renew for sure. Oh, yeah, renew. Give me more. We are avid users of the local coffee shops downtown. Um, I'm, we definitely keep them in business, so yeah. I think I so. I think we all agree. We keep those lights on. <laughs> renew. And it keeps our lights on. Hey. Mentally. Ba -da -da. Thank you. Thank Come you. On. <laughs> all right. Last up, renew or return goodreads.com. Oh, renew. Renew. It's our favorite website. Love Goodreads. It is the best social media platform of all time. I agree. It really is. Everyone should be on Goodreads. If you're not, you should. Put up that reading challenge. Let me know what you're reading. Oh, and... Yeah. <laughs> Add me as a friend. Same. Do you have a reading challenge going right now? Yes. I actually just upped it because I'm so far ahead oh, schedule. Wow. I was thinking about upping mine too. What? Yeah. Yours is 52. I know, but it, I'm really ahead of schedule. Really? Yeah. Oh but it's, it's because I've been reading a lot of YA. So Yeah. Yeah. That's because it's so good you fly through it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Easy reads. Yeah. Love Goodreads. If you're not familiar with Goodreads, they have this wonderful accountability tool called a reading challenge where you set a goal for the year, the calendar year, and you keep track of the books you're reading and it tells you if you're ahead of schedule or on time or behind. I'm usually behind. <laughs> but right now we're not. So it's great. So yeah. we're feeling that, feeling that challenge burn. And you can like, like, review and rate them and keep track of what you read and what you want to read so you can have like a whole list of books that are up next yeah so we are renewing goodreads for sure all the time are you on goodreads brian no I'm not. no it's not mm -hmm. your thing not my thing does it's brian okay. know how to read no yeah Never have read you a ever book. read uh, a, no. no what's read reading <laughs> reading <laughs> producer brian's not much of yeah, a words guy we're gonna have to help him out yeah that's fine so that's our segment renew where we turn Pretty fabulous. Thank you, producer Ryan, for helping us with those. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what a lifesaver. All right. Moving on now, everyone, to our wonderful interview with the man in overalls. Yes. Nathan Ballantyne was here in his overalls. Yeah, he, he is did. a gardening expert. He is an advocate for growing your own groceries. He has this really cool shopping cart that he brings all over town. That yeah. has a garden planted in the cart. It is out of this world crazy. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. And this is how I first found out about Nathan is he tagged us in a picture um, with his grow cart outside the library. And it's pretty sweet. And he lives like a couple miles away. And so he pushed this thing all the way downtown. It's pretty crazy. And he, what was he saying? He has like 19 different things growing in his grow cart. Yeah. He does this thing called square foot gardening, which is where you grow things in one square foot and it really maximizes your space in your garden. He's going to tell us all about that. He also has these great resources on his website, which is maninoveralls.blogspot.com. And you can learn what you can grow in a square. Yeah, and he has a couple services where he helps you get it started, gives you resources, will build your raised bed for you. Um, and he tells us a little bit about where the whole overalls thing came from. So here's the man in overalls himself, Nathan. Nathan, thank you so much for coming on Completely Booked with us today. Um, so... 
You're wearing your overalls today, which I'm really glad that you did. And I love this, the man in overalls persona that you have. When did this start? Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Um, first off, um, the man in overalls thing came about because um, there were a couple of things in my my past. I grew up wearing overalls as a kid. I wore Oshkosh and my grandfather actually wore overalls every day of his life. Um, my my mother and her, my aunt used to joke that he um, he wore them to church. He just changed his shirt, mm-hmm. you know, put on some fancy <laughs> shoes or something. Yeah. Um, so much so that when he was buried, they had him dressed in overalls and they put seed packets in his uh, breast pocket before they planted them. Um, anyhow, so that was in my my past. And then I stopped wearing overalls and, and um, walked away from them. And then I was getting started to launch my um, my business uh, and social enterprise, Man and Overalls. And um, I thought, okay, I know about gardening. I know about um, accounting, keeping my books well enough to, to do it. But marketing, like, I, I don't understand how that works. How do you become a, a story? How do you um, uh, brand yourself? And as I was in this open loop quandary asking myself, you know, how do I do marketing? I was visiting my sister and... Um, we were driving together and we pulled up the off ramp of the interstate and there was this man there standing with a sign and it said, anything helps. And, um, it just struck me. I I started paying attention because it was a different phrasing on the sign. I remember as a kid, almost all the signs like that said, we'll work for food. And so it just stuck out to me as different. And then I started realizing, wait a second, there's like 200 cars in this line right now. So I did some quick math and this man with, uh, um, piece of cardboard and a 50 cent marker was getting exposure to like 7,000 people a day. And I thought, well, I could do that. <laughs> um, and so I thought, what if I had a sign that said, we'll garden for food as a throwback, you know? And then I started thinking, how could I make the image better? Um, I thought, what if I wore overalls? Cause then it'd be like more agricultural. And I was like, wait a second, granddaddy and pitchfork and American Gothic. And, um, and so all those things kind of came together at once. And I was like, I could make signs, you know, stand by the side of the road to get some attention because it doesn't cost anything. Mm-hmm. And um, and so I started wearing overalls and and then it just kept working. So I, I went with it. Yeah, I think yeah. that's great. Yeah, it's a perfect gardening agriculture, agricultural thing. I feel like I've told this story on here before, but I had this pair of overalls that I had to have as a kid. And they had little like Scotty dogs on the pocket and they were from, I don't know, like JC Penney's or something, but I wore them like every day. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm still a big fan of a good pair of overalls. Me too. Like I have a few at home and I wear them. I have some white ones that are Ooh. really cool. Yeah. Those are great for the summer months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, so wanna... you're styling in your overalls, I think. Yeah. yeah. They're I think for so. sure coming back. Yeah. So how did the gardening get started? Where did you start with your first garden? Sure. Uh, I grew up garden when I was, when I was eight, my mother had me, um, me, my sister and I start a garden in our front yard as a, a project, and I fell in love with it. Uh, my sister uh, went through that growing season, but then the next year she just kind of backed up and it became my project. What did you like most yeah. about it? Um, so I, um, I love the, the magic of growing food that you could eat. Um, you can't, um, you can't plant money and grow a money tree, right? But you can take a piece, a little tiny piece of food and stick in the ground and grow more food. And it's this magical process. Um, And I love how there's this interaction between uh, a caregiver and a garden. So you can't dictate to a garden, but you can nurture, you can guide, you can suggest, recommend and things like that. Um, Very much how folks talk about parenting. Um, it's, It's not this dictatorial, you will do this but it's, I'm going to give you everything you need and guide you. And um, if you do it right, then it, it flourishes. Um, so I love that. And I love the connectional aspect of growing food. Um, that's one of the biggest pluses for me. Um, I started my first garden in, in um, the front yard because that's where we had our sunlight. And then actually my entire life, I've lived in uh, four, different, four or five different places now. And every single place I've had a garden in the front yard just because it was where the best sunlight was, but it also was this awesome connector with my neighbors. Folks would walk by and there's something about a garden that just gives people permission to breach that American conduct of like, Oh, I don't want to disturb you. Um, and they'd say, Oh wow. What are you growing? What are those collard greens? Oh, my grandfather used to grow those. And then, you know, the stories just come out, the recipes come out. And so all of a sudden 
this person that was a stranger now is your your neighbor and you're talking to him. Mm-hmm. Wow. So gardens yeah. are like the community builder. Uh, they're certainly a great tool that way. That's yeah. so interesting. Yeah, my parents always had a garden in the front yard, and they still do to this day. Actually, we have like a really, I, I, I never thought about it, though, that that's where the sunlight is. Maybe that's why, but it's also like our front yard's much bigger than our backyard. Mm-hmm. But I have so many memories of like my dad has this big red like tilling machine mm-hmm. where he used to go out every year and till the soil and then... It was also my punishment to have to pick green beans. Like if I got in trouble, like Jenna, go outside and pick all the green beans. Oh, poor and I Jenna. Hated it. Poor Jenna. It was hot. That sounds yeah. fun. It was not. And I got mosquito bites. I hear those stories a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Or like going to the grandparents' house and, and the, the pittance that they had to pay was to go pick green beans or squash or mm-hmm. okra. It was the worst because it was itchy or whatever. Oh, yeah. Although I thought the same thing with the green beans. It made me so itchy. Really? Yeah. Huh. I don't know. I have great memories of digging up potatoes with my grandfather in his Whoa. garden. Yeah, yeah I've never done potatoes. that. It was fun. It was hot, but fun. Yeah. Yeah. Did you use a shovel? Or uh-huh. Uh-huh. That could be fun. I think it was my first experience with a shovel. I feel I like kids A girl like never forgets her first experience with a shovel. I agree. <laughs> People like doing stuff like that. Like, I used to love having just like having like a little hatchet and going around and like, you know, hitting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. See, that would have been fun. Yeah. I don't know mm. about the green beans. Yeah, and the potatoes are good, too, because digging up root vegetables is like finding treasure. Yeah. Because you don't know exactly what you're going to find, and you're digging, you're like, where are they? And then all of a sudden, boom, you hit the mother load, and they That's a good pop point. Out. Right, and the magic, like you said, mm-hmm. of that being like, wait, these are potatoes that, like, McDonald's uses to make french fries? Like, mm. this is the same vegetable? That's crazy. And you right. made it? It's right. so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In addition to like all your gardening and stuff, you also kind of encourage people in the community to grow their own groceries. That's kind of part of your whole thing. Why do you think Mm -hmm. that's so important for people? Um, I'm uh, I'm a big advocate of that because um, number one, it's just so much easier than people think. Um, Folks think that you have to be this, you know, master gardener. You have to convert your whole yard. You have to basically start a farm to start gardening, and you don't. You can start really small, and so you can start um, chipping away your grocery budget. Um, introducing new and healthier foods into your diet and such. Um, and it can be a, a five minutes a week kind of investment. So um, I think that's a big reason because it's just low hanging fruit in terms of um, quality of life. And um, uh, another is, um, I forgot my other reason. Oh, um, because of the, uh, um, the current situation of health in America is just outrageous. Um, we work, kind of like the the frog in the pot of boiling water is we've just, just been seeing things transition slowly for so long that we take it as normal that, um, you know, nearly 30% of our population is obese, that folks have diabetes and chronic um, health conditions, uh, heart, um, heart uh, attacks, heart um, disease, um, all kind of things like this that are um, at least in part diet related. And, um, uh, and healthy food can be expensive food. Um, but if you grow it yourself, it can be pennies on the dollar. So mm-hmm. um, I think that we, for the sake of our life expectancy, right now kids are expected to actually live not as long as their parents. Um, and that's the first time in modern history that that's been true in America. Um, and a lot of that has to do with these diet-related chronic diseases. So I don't know how to fix all that problem, but certainly eating more fruits and vegetables is a, a big step in the right direction. Um, so if you grow your groceries, then it makes that more accessible. Mm-hmm. Wow. And like yeah. you said, it can be intimidating to get started on that, especially mm-hmm. if you don't have two green thumbs. So right. what crops do you recommend people start with? Yeah. Um, the biggest thing to do is to grow in season. Um, so whatever you grow, just make sure that you're growing it at the time of the year that it thrives. Um, so for instance, tomatoes, they do really well if you plant them in early March. Um, you, they, they'll get growing and they'll um, beat a lot of the pests and such. If you try to grow tomatoes in the fall, they get stressed and they take forever to ripen um, because they're stressed and the pu- bugs tend to attack them um, more. Same thing with lettuces. So my first garden when I was eight, I grew um, carrots and this bug infested lettuce in, um, in the springtime. And those actually do better in the fall and winter mm. here in, in North Florida. Um, and uh, so that's the biggest thing is growing in the right season. And I've got all kind of um, resources on my website. Um, there's a, a little guide called What Can You Grow in a Square? And that has everything listed by the seasons. So that's the, the biggest starting point. But I love, um, I love growing uh, 
peppers, green peppers are really easy. You plant them, you walk away, you harvest. Um, and in the fall, I love the, um, the cooking greens, things like collards, kale, um, chard, mustards. Um, and w- what I love about those is that you plant once, both the peppers and the greens. You plant once and your harvest window is several months long. Mm-hmm. So you get to do this continual harvest thing. Instead of, um, I, I love root vegetables, I love potatoes, right? But you, you get one harvest off of a potato crop. Whereas I planted my collard greens in September and I've been harvesting off of them since late October. And here we are, January, and I'm gonna continue harvesting on them through March or April. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's a win for me because mm, yeah. the work to reward ratio is just um, uh, out of the world. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Man. And like you were saying, you have a bunch of resources on your website for these and people can access those for free. Yep. Okay. Awesome. And yeah. what about the soil and stuff? Like, do you need to buy soil or how does that work? Does, I don't know. How yeah. do you know? Sure. Um, you, uh, first let me back up. So I've got resources. I've got like little, um, cheat sheets, front and back kind of resources. I also have a bunch of YouTube videos on my channel okay. about, um, uh, how do you build a raised bed? How do you um, plant tomatoes? How do you water? How do you grow year round through the winter and things like that? So I have little, um, like two minute videos I did with the department of agriculture. Oh, cool. Um, and those were, were focused towards kids. So they're a little, um, um, uh, just silly and stuff, mm-hmm. but, um, lots of great information packed into those. So check those out. Um, but you asked about soil. So mm-hmm. the answer is, um, you can certainly build up your your soil and and make it a thriving um, environment for uh, growing your groceries. You can also build a raised bed and bring in some kind of um, uh, soil mix to add to that bed, like my magic mix. Mm-hmm. Something that from the very beginning, you're going to plant stuff and it's just going to jump out and grow like crazy. Um, and I have done both. Um, the the long term, you know, DIY method is to work with your existing soil, build it up, do things like compost and cover crops and um, sheet mulching and, and things like that. Um, but if you're you're beginning or you just want the kind of down and dirty quick way, then then do a raised bed and fill it up with some kind of um, really premium um, soil or compost mix. Something that people talk about with words like magic or wow, it mm-hmm. was awesome. Um, because if you get mediocre soil from the beginning, then you're going to have a headache kind of the whole whole way along. Yeah, the way. that's what I was yeah. wondering, too. Jeez. All right, cool. So anyone can start a garden if mm-hmm. they have a square. Mm-hmm. Man, I should yeah. do it. Yeah. What would you grow? I like peppers. I think green peppers would be really good. Um, let me think. What's other stuff? I always want to grow like herbs. You know, mm-hmm. every recipe needs fresh herbs, but you don't want to buy a whole thing Absolutely. for one recipe. Right. And they're like $3 for yeah. a whole and thing of herbs. And you need like yeah. two sprigs. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So if you just walk outside and grab some, which mm-hmm. is what my mom does, Jenna, go outside and get this. Yeah. I don't know what that looks like, mom. Send me a pic and I'll go get it. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, I needed to learn what they all look like. Right. But yeah. yeah. I would oh. definitely grow some herbs. What would you grow? I would love to grow just like spinach. Mm. salad mm-hmm. lettuce tomatoes yeah. brussels sprouts my parents oh, grow brussels sprouts and really? they're really good wow. so do they cool. grow them around here or elsewhere no it's in more like northwest florida okay um like it's called niceville but it's like right right yeah, yeah. I know where niceville yeah, is, yeah okay my my mother grew up in graceville so it's just okay. around the corner cool yeah, yeah they're really good That's, though. yeah i'll have to connect with them because i i've grown brussels sprouts but not um abundantly they're yeah they're always a little bit um uh, sparse, more sparse than I'd like. That's yeah. what I, I that's what I was wondering. Cause like, you know, you look in there is like one little thing in the middle of the big, mm-hmm. you know, leaky thing. Yeah. Yeah. On the stock. But they do get like enough. I feel like last year we had them for like, she saved the last bit for Thanksgiving dinner and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Fresh Brussels sprouts are great. Yeah. I mean, it, Brussels sprouts have a bad rap because of frozen Brussels sprouts. Yeah. And those are, um, you can uh, spice them up and such, but generally speaking, they're not great. But fresh Brussels sprouts with like a little drizzle of honey or maple syrup on them or Ooh, something. I've oh never tried that to make them sweeter. Roasted. That's no. good. Yeah, you roast, roast them in the yeah. oven with like a little or like a balsamic glaze. Mm. I've done the balsamic. That's really yeah, good. So mm-hmm. good. Mm, yeah. So tell us about your grow cart, too. You have this thing. Yeah. It's a shopping cart that you've converted into a mobile 
garden. Like garden. Yeah. How did you get this idea? Yeah. So my, my slogan is grow your groceries. Mm -hmm. And I was talking with my niece who um, is a creative type. She was, she spontaneously would paint on her walls as a kid and you'd be like, Oh, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then it was kind of awesome. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we let her go with it. And, um, uh, anyhow, I said, Katie, you know, I've got this new slogan. I'm in Jacksonville now. I, I grew up in Tallahassee. I started my business there. And I said, how could I dramatize that? So like I mentioned, I, I started very literally in Tallahassee, um, doing my marketing on the side of the road with big signs that said things like, um, uh, grow your own food and share it. And we can grow food with a picture of Rosie the Riveter and <laughs> honk for food gardens. And they're big and colorful. So I was thinking about doing something like that in Jacksonville. And I was talking to my niece and she said, well, uncle, if you do something like that, what you need is you need your sign to be a grocery bag because you're growing your groceries. Um, and um, I thought, oh, that's good. Right. So I got some grocery bags. I ordered like 25 of them online and stenciled out some some um, like grow your groceries on it. Mm -hmm. And I actually did stand by the side of the road um, over in Brooklyn and Riverside and downtown and stuff. But it just wasn't big enough. It wasn't colorful enough. It didn't catch, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was in the back of my mind. I thought, well, how could I make this bigger and better? And I thought, well, what if I could turn a grocery cart? Actually, I was like, what if I could fill a bunch of grocery bags and have like plants growing out of grocery bags? And all of a sudden it hit me. I was like, wait, wait, forget the grocery bags. How about a grocery how about a grocery cart, a grow cart, a grow cart, mm -hmm. right? And so I was playing with it and um, I actually almost just threw it off the table because I thought, oh, you know, I'll, I'll look silly. You know, it's, I don't have a grocery cart. How am I going to get one? Yada, yada. And, um, and then I was um, at the hardware store and there was this abandoned shopping cart in the vacant lot um, next door. And I always pay attention to vacant lots because um, I just imagine how much food could be growing in them. Mm -hmm. So there was my grocery cart, you know, I was like, oh, this is it. I have to do this. So I got my grocery cart and um, built a little raised bed frame on it, filled it with my magic mix and planted it. And the really fun thing is it's this mobile um, demonstration of how much food you can grow in small spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, folks, folks always think that you need a farm to have a garden and you don't. You can grow tons in small spaces. So in, in my grow cart, I have um, 20 different varieties of food crops grown in there. Whoa. Um, so, I mean, and that's, you know, a grocery cart, right? Yeah, it's small. Yeah. That's a lot. Wow. So what's the response you've gotten from the grocery cart? <laughs> Mostly it's the deadpan stare, like, what's happening? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> right, like, as they're, like, gazing as I walk by. So a lot of that, and oftentimes what happens is that happens. And if I'm in an event space, like I, I went to Ram, I went to Porch Fest, um, or if I'm downtown and people see me on the next block, then um, it's like their mind has adjusted to, to processing like, okay, this doesn't fit any of my boxes. And then they get really interested and the stories start coming out, just like the garden in the front yard. You know, mm -hmm. they say, is that collards? Da, da, da. And then they, they go with their stories of their family and picking vegetables at their grandparents or parents or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been it's been super positive and folks want to, you know, take pictures of it and ask what I'm doing and, and all, all like that. It's yeah. been a lot of fun. Yeah. And you like push it around like town, right? Yeah. I went I, like seven miles one day. It was oh my gosh. ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's crazy. And so tell us about the business side of your gardening mm -hmm. sure. business. Yeah, so I offer food garden support. Okay. Um, I do. I both support uh, DIYers and folks that want turnkey um, food garden support. So for the folks that um, they want a garden, but they just don't know what they're doing or they don't want to do all the heavy lifting or figure everything out, then they call me and I'll come out and help them pick a, a spot for their garden, develop a design. I'll do the, the heavy lifting, the installation. Um, and most folks at the time of planting, they want to be involved because they want to learn. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll do it together. I'll say, Hey, I'm going to, you know, put the tomatoes in this section of the garden, put the green beans down here, put lettuce over here, what have you. Um, and this is why, and then we'll, um, I'll demonstrate, but then we'll plant together. Um, in any garden that I do plant, I come back and, um, check in with folks a few weeks later so that they're not just like thrown out there. Um, and that way, they're learning a lot right through that planting session and they don't have to try to remember everything for the full season all at once. So I'll, I'll come back and check in with them 
and um, talk through, you know, what and when to harvest um, and answer their questions and things like that. And then folks that want that extra touch, I'll come back each month and do a coaching session with them um, and help them maintain their gardens. Um, and all my customers I check back in with each season to just say, how'd the season go? Did you have any questions? Can I be of support this season? You know, can I clean up top dress and replant for you? Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a good portion of folks that are good, right? They needed that push to get started. Um, but then they like figuring it out and, and going from there. And then there's a few other folks that say, you know what, just make it a little bit easier for me. Um, I'll do the day to day stuff, but, um, uh, take that, that edge off of, of gardening. And that's a, a big goal of mine because I feel like, um, if you, if you know what you're doing, then gardening can be easy. If you don't know what you're doing, it's completely daunting. It's overwhelming. Um, but it's actually not a whole lot that people don't know. They just need those little prompts and reminders and such. Um, so anyhow, yeah, that's, that's the lion's share of what I do. Um, a few other side projects work with community gardens and, um, develop, uh, youth programs around gardening and are contracted with the department of ag, uh, to do educational videos and things like that. But, um, by and large, it's food garden support. See, yeah. I think your your business idea is so brilliant because so many people need this outward accountability in order mm. to accomplish things. Like people say every year, like I really want to start a garden and they just never get around to it because they get busy and it falls off and it's daunting like we talked it's about. True. So the fact that you are intervening and saying, here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to mm-hmm. be the voice of authority, but I'm going to teach you how to do it. That's so brilliant. I'm so glad you're able to provide this to our community. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I can tell. And we also have a lot of resources at the library, too. Tell us a couple of some of your favorite books, maybe, that we might have at the library that people can also check out to Absolutely. get more information. Yeah. Um, I base a lot of my planting around the square foot gardening method. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was by Mel Bartholomew. And um, that's a, a old classic from about the, I don't know, 75 or something. And um, it's all about uh, how you don't need to plant in rows because um, since we're primarily we're not gardening with mules and tractors, we don't need that space in between the plants in order for a tractor wheel or for a mule to walk. Um, and so you can you can plant that space and just reach from the outside. Um, and because of that, then you're able to squeeze about four or five times as much um, food in the same amount of growing space. Um, it's one of the reasons that we can have um, a garden that's like a 30th the size of, of our you know, our grandparents' garden or whatever. Um, so square foot gardening, um, I love this book called um, How to Grow More Vegetables by John Jevons. Um, there's a great one called Weedless Gardening. Um, and what am I forgetting? I, I Do you remember? There was one about the largest tomato. Oh, the yeah, The guy that yeah, had the world, world record, record tomato. Yeah, that this guy grew like 1,900 pounds off one tomato plant or something. What? He had, he had this tomato cage that was eight feet around and 28 feet tall. It was nuts. He um, he uh, composted kudzu because kudzu apparently is um, it's a legume, so it fixes nitrogen. That's why it grows so crazy. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, so hmm. he would make com- kudzu compost, and and that's what he grew his tomatoes in. So he would plant one tomato in this like giant garden bed, like eight feet around of pure kudzu compost. <laughs> and yeah, thousands of pounds from one tomato plant is crazy. Nuts. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, we'll have all those books on our podcast page as well. So tell us how we can learn more about you and uh, your business. Absolutely. Yeah, you can visit my website, manandoveralls.com. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all those kind of things like that. Um, I, uh, I have um, little tips and tricks that I put on Instagram and Facebook pretty regularly. Um, and also if you want to keep up with the grow cart and such, then that's where I put that stuff as well. I have longer form, um, uh, blogs and, and, um, tips and, um, uh, how do you say that? Like educational materials on mm-hmm. my blog as well. Um, so that's the man and overalls.com. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. We'll link that on our page as well. And we have one last question for you. Uh, we want to know when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? What did I want to be? So it's funny. So I, in seventh grade, I had to um, uh, write a triple report of like, what are the three professions? And um, I uh, wrote a report on being a farmer, on being an architect, and a stockbroker. <laughs> uh, 
And all at the same time? W- no, not necessarily at the same okay. time. It was, it was kind of like three different options. And then actually um, the year after that, uh, for about a decade, I thought I was going to be a minister. Mm-hmm. So um, here I am. I'm a, um, Runs the gamut. <laughs> I am, um, yeah, farmer is the closest um, hit, but uh, I could say architect too, building yeah. different gardens and stuff. Absolutely, There's all the architecture. different pieces yeah. weave in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, your grow cart was definitely architecture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, some landscape design. And stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Nathan, for coming on. I think this is an awesome service that you have for our community. So we really appreciate you and all you're doing. Yeah, thanks y'all so much for having me. Appreciate it. It was yeah. fun. Yeah, absolutely. Jenna, are you any good at gardening? No. Definitely not. I'm not either. I can kind of keep houseplants alive, but that's about it. Nah. I got like an orchid once. I think I kept it alive for a couple months, but, and that's like the most low maintenance thing. You like literally put like a couple ice cubes on it to melt slowly. No. It died. Oh, I know. Rest in peace, orchid. I know. But my mom is really good. And so is my dad. Yeah. Yeah. We actually, Jenna and I just learned that our moms are both master gardeners. That's a pretty big deal. It's a thing. I know. I I don't know exactly what that means, but I think it just means that they're pretty good at gardening. I think they are basically botanists is what it means. Oh. They're like really fancy. It sounds super fancy. I yeah. feel like you should have like some, like a plaque over your over your desk, like a degree. Yeah, basically. It seems legit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that on his website, too, he gives you things that you can grow in the cool season and in the warm spring season and in the hot summer season. Yes. And he's made these lists specifically for Northeast Florida. So he says that people often joke that our winter is July and August, meaning like it's impossible to Mm -hmm. grow anything during those months. So he's really altered common lists of things that are in season different times of the year and made it so that it appeals to northeast florida growers yeah. pretty cool stuff it is pretty sweet and if you want to learn more more like we said man and overalls dot com, and you can also follow him at man and overalls on facebook instagram twitter and his youtube channel which he said has lots of interactive tutorials on how to do these things it does indeed and while you're out there on the internet make sure you check out our page jackspubliclibrary.org slash podcast and also like us on all of the social media platforms we're on instagram facebook and twitter at jack's library yeah make sure you subscribe if you're listening on itunes leave us a rating and a five-star glowing review yes please helps us out a lot indeed this podcast was produced by brian thomas aka bt aka producer Producer Brian. brian goodbye